Hi, I'm David Cartmel, and welcome to Top Whistle, the Irish Whistle Review Show. On this episode, I will be reviewing the Tony Dixon DX004 Soprano D Whistle, made by Tony Dixon of Devonshire, England. It's a low-end whistle made of plastic. It's both tunable and it can work as two different types of instruments. The heads are removable and I can change from a standard Irish whistle to playing it as a piccolo flute if I wish. Now, for this video I'm sticking with what I know. I'm sticking to reviewing the whistle side of things, not the flute, because I've tried the piccolo and to keep a long story short, I was absolutely dreadful at it and I just do not wish to embarrass myself playing it to you. So, if you want to know how much this thing costs, the normal standard traditional whistle alone will set you back 21 quid. And if you want to play it with the duo heads, the flute and the normal whistle head, it'll cost you around 32 quid. And the links to Tony Dixon's website are in the comment box below if you wish to purchase it for yourself. And from what I gather, Tony Dixon's whistles and flutes are highly regarded in the music industry. But even that said, does his reputation stand up to scrutiny? We're about to find out. After playing this whistle and weighing the pros and cons, I'd say that the good points about this whistle are it's a very good pick up and play whistle. There was no warming up required and it's perfectly in tune. There's no screeches or weird things that I encountered whilst playing, which is most common in a low whistle, but not in the case of this particular one. So that's a good point that's going for it. And it's highly responsive and when it comes to volume, it's pretty mid range. It's not too loud, it's not too quiet and it needs no maintenance and it even stands the stress test if you physically throw it or drop it you can still play it and it's still in tune so it's pretty strong and robust if you're a clumsy user or someone who has basically has kids who are playing their first instrument and you know they tend to throw it around these things happen and when it comes to the breath requirements it's pretty average at best you won't easily run out of breath which is a good thing and it can even be played outdoors. So it is a potential busking whistle, but the only problem I'd say is, is if you're gonna go down the route of playing it in high, strong winds, it's gonna struggle, but low winds, it was fine. And when I was playing at the train station the other day, doing the outdoor test, it seemed to have no problems. Now, if I was to go more into the issues of whether it's a bad whistle. No, it's not a bad whistle at all. If I had to pick any nasty bit about it, I'd say, you know, it's it, if you're gonna go into the route of using this as a professional instrument, so in a bar, concert, or in a band, loud environments where people are talking, glasses clinking, etc., you may not be heard with this whistle. So that's the only thing that I would say goes against it. But having said that, this whistle is pretty good for both practice, for leisure, even how I even used this on my recent holiday to Egypt and this makes a pretty good travel whistle so 
Despite the, the little cons, I think there's more that goes for this whistle from a quality perspective to even a handling perspective, so I'd highly recommend this whistle to anyone. I decided to score this whistle a respectable 8.5 out of 10. The quality of this whistle is high for something of such low cost, which often is pretty rare in a market where the amount of money you buy tends to buy the quality of whistle that you get. It's pretty much a whistle that is good for all types of users regardless of their skill level and it's pretty universal at that. And if you want to buy this whistle for yourself, as I've said earlier, it's in the description box below. And if you wish to subscribe to my channel for more episodes, then please do hit the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Goodbye.